You can do this. You can do this. You can do this. You can do this. Woo! All right. For response time. Chlorine gas can be generated in the laboratory by reacting potassium permanganate with an acidified solution of a sodium chloride. The net ionic equation for the reaction is given above. Boom. Part A, a 25.00 milliliter sample of 0.250 molar sodium chloride reacts completely with excess potassium permanganate. The chlorine gas produced is dried and stored in a sealed container. At 22 degrees Celsius, the pressure of the chlorine gas in the container is 0.950 atmospheres. Oh, I feel Pivnert's gonna be somewhere in my future. Subpart I, calculate the number of moles of chloride ion present before any reaction occurs. Easy. We are given a volume and a concentration of sodium chloride, the source of our chloride ion. I'm going to use my molarity equation. Boom. Plug in my molarity, plug in my volume in liters, and then solve for x. Answer. 0.00625 moles chloride ion. Boom. Free response. Off to a great start. Subpart II. Calculate the volume in liters of the chlorine gas in the sealed container. All right, I'm going to scroll back up to my equation here. We just determined the number of moles of chloride ion, and we know that that's our limiting reactant because it reacts completely with excess KMnO4. And the relationship between chloride ion and chloride gas is four to two. 0 0.00625 moles chloride ion times moles chloride, moles chlorine gas. My ratio, two to four, two to four. Times two, answer divided by four, answer. answer. 0 0.003125 moles chlorine. Remind myself of sig figs? <sighs> Not done. Looking for volume in liters of that chlorine gas. Bivner time. Pressure. 0 0.950 atmospheres. Volume? I don't know. That's what we're looking for. Number of moles just figured it out. Oh my goodness, not again with these R's. Remember, always go to your units to help you decide which R value you're gonna use. 0 0.0821 liters times atmospheres per mole Kelvin. Temperature, 22 degrees Celsius. Temperature, 295 Kelvin. Don't forget to convert. Calculator. Times 0.0821. Answer. Times 295. Answer. Divided by 0 0.950. Answer. Volume equals 0 0.0797 liters. Woo! Showing my work. Feeling good about it. An initial rate study, here comes the kinetics, was performed on the reaction system. Data for the experiment are given in the table below. Part B. Using the information in the table, determine the order of the reaction with respect to each of the following. Justify your answers. Subpart I. Chloride ion. As I decide which trials to use, I want to make sure that the concentration of only the chloride ion is changing and that the concentrations of the other species are held constant. So I know that any changes in rate is due to changing that chloride ion concentration. So for this first one, I'm gonna use trial one and trial two. Let's take a look at what we've done with our concentrations of chloride ion. We've gone from 0 0.0104 to 0 0.0312. Notice how that has changed our rate. We've gone from 2.25 times 10 to the minus eight to 2.03 times 10 to the minus seven. All right, so how do we determine the order of the reaction with respect to chloride ion, and how am I gonna show that justification? Easiest thing to do is compare the two rates to the two concentrations of chloride ion. If I divide my two rates, my rate has increased ninefold. Next, let's divide our two concentrations. We have tripled our concentration and our rate has gone up ninefold. As we think about the order with respect to the chloride ion, we want to think about what power do I need to raise this value of 3 to to equal 9? Answer 2. Comparing trials 1 and 2, the chloride ion concentration triples and the rate increases ninefold. 
while the concentrations of other reactants are held constant. Therefore, the reaction is second order with respect to chloride ion. Oh, determine the order justified. Subpart II, permanganate ion. This time, let's look at trials two and three. Here, the concentration of chloride ion and hydrogen ion remain constant, while permanganate ion is cut in half. Let's compare changes in rate. 2.03 times 10 to the minus seven to 1.02 times 10 to the minus seven. That occurs when our permanganate ion concentration goes from 0 0.00400 molar to 0 0.00200. Let's divide our rates. Parentheses, 2.03. I don't even need a calculator for this one. 2.03 times 10 to the minus seven divided by 1.02 times 10 to the minus seven, two. 0 0.00400 divided by 0 0.00200, two. Now, what order do I have to raise my concentration to in order for two to equal two? Answer, one. Comparing trial three to trial two, the permanganate ion concentration doubles and the rate doubles, while the concentration of other reactants is held constant. Therefore, the reaction is first order with respect to permanganate ion. Remember, think about your rate loss. If we were to write a rate law for this reaction, the rate of the reaction would be equal to our rate constant times the concentration of hydrogen ion to some order, some power, times the concentration of chloride ion to some power or some order, times the concentration of permanganate ion to some order or some power. So now think about what we just did here for the permanganate ion. The rate constant is a constant. We keep the hydrogen ion concentration and chloride ion's concentration constant as well. So since all of these things remain constant, the rate is really dependent on the concentration of permanganate ion raised to some order, some power. That's what we're doing up here, math. Part C, circle the graph or graphs below that best represents the order of the reaction with respect to the permanganate ion. All right, recall that we just determined the reaction to be first order with respect to the permanganate ion. As I look at these graphs, I'm trying to determine which of these graphs represents a first order reaction. Carefully note your graph labels. We've got absorbance against time, natural log of absorbance against time, and one over the absorbance against time. A reaction that is first order with respect to the permanganate ion is gonna have a straight line plot when we graph the natural log of its absorbance against time. Now you might be saying to yourself, wait a minute, I thought it was natural log of concentration against time. True. However, remember Beer's law relates absorbance to concentration. Those two things are directly proportional to one another. As the concentration increases, so does absorbance. So in addition to seeing graphs of concentration against time, you can also plot absorbance against time. Boom, oh, one point. Part D, the reaction is known to be third order with respect to hydrogen ion. Using this information and your answer to part B above, complete both of the following. Subpart so I, write the rate law for the reaction. Easy, rate is equal to our rate constant, little k, times concentration of chloride ion raised to the power of two. Remember from part B that we determined the reaction to be second order with respect to the chloride ion, times the concentration of permanganate ion to the first. Remember from part B, we determined the reaction to be first order with respect to permanganate ion, times the concentration of hydrogen ion to the third. We're told that it's third order with respect to hydrogen ion. Boom, rate law. Subpart II, calculate the value of the rate constant K for the reaction, including appropriate units. All right, we just wrote the rate law, and remember that because the rate constant K is a constant, we can use the data from any of our trials. I'm gonna use the first trial for this. My rate, 2.25 times 10 to the minus eight. 
2.25 times 10 to the minus 8. Molarity per second equal to rate constant K. That's what we're solving for. Concentration of chloride ion 0.0104. Oh, squared. Second order. Concentration of permanganate ion 0.00400 to the first. First order with respect to permanganate ion. Concentration of hydrogen ion, 3.00 molar. To the third. Third order. Calculate a time. 0.0104 squared. Azer. Times. 0.0400. Azer. Times. Parentheses. 3.00. Close parentheses. Math. U. Azer. Boom. Remind myself of sig figs and be cautious of your units for molarity. We did molarity squared times molarity times molarity cubed, which gives us molarity to the sixth. Let's solve for K. Parentheses 2.25, second E, negative X. Close parentheses, divide by, new parentheses, second answer, close parentheses, answer. To three sig figs, we get 1.93 times 10 to the minus 3. Be careful with your units here. Molarity divided by molarity to the 6th is going to give us molarity to the minus 5 per second. Boom. Be careful here, your units are worth one point. An easy trick to help you with the units, determine the reaction order overall. Two plus one plus three means this reaction is sixth order overall. Your units for the rate constant are always gonna be molarity to the negative of one less than your reaction overall. So molarity to the minus five per second. Brings us to part E. Is it likely that the reaction occurs in a single elementary step? Justify your answer. It is not likely that the reaction occurs in a single step because the reaction requires the collision of 13 reactant particles. Why 13? Eight hydrogen ions, four chloride ions, and a permanganate ion would all have to collide together if this reaction occurred in a single step. The probability of a 13 particle collision is negligible. Remember, most successful collisions occur between one or two particles at most, maybe three. We are done.